Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at some easy to modify primitives. So let's quickly introduce the issue here and some of the solutions that seem to be making an appearance. If I just bring in a cube, when we bring in any object in Blender we get the options to change whatever we want about it in this box. For example I can change the size of this. But that is the only time when we get to really modify this in a non-destructive way. And this seems quite against the way Blender generally works. If I just duplicate this and then we'll control and minus, you can see we get a boolean here, but if I click, we've got this as a modifier, which means that at any point I can G and move this around and we can make changes. And what's great about that is that you can use Blender very much as like a sketching program for your ideas, which is how I generally model. And anything you realize you need to change later, you can do while you've still got all of the options of setting specific sizes, either by scaling or we could press N and then we can modify things on our item information. For example, if I need the dimensions on the Y to be exactly 1.5, I can type that there and we're good to go. So this makes this really easy to use, but there is one problem with this. If I just delete this out and bring in something more complex like a cylinder, and that is that here, while well, we can change the radius and the depth, and even if we click off this and move around, we can click back and press F9, and that'll bring back our options. So we do have some options to change this. For example, we could up this to let's say 64 to make it more smooth. As soon as I do another operation like G and move it, we've now lost those options. If I press F9, that brings back our last function, not the information for this cylinder, which means that now while I could S and Z to scale it down in the Z axis, I really can't change the number of vertices here, which I might need to or want to later. And that seems pretty limiting for a program when it's designed largely around these non-destructive processes. Let's just delete that out. But we are starting to get some solutions for this and a lot of them are bundled with Blender or at least we can get them from the extensions warehouse. So if we go to edit and preferences, we go to get extensions and we type in primitive. You can see we've got two options that we can get from Blender's own extension website or we just get them from here. Modern primitives and ND primitives. Now, you just need to click install. There'll be a button here for each of those or whichever one you decide you want. We're gonna talk through both of them. Come to add-ons and then we'll just activate. We'll start with ND primitives. Save our preferences and then have a look at what we get. So what we get now, if we press Shift A, is we get this pie menu for all our different primitives that we can use. And if you click other, it's got all of our normal menus. So we do get to our normal menu through that. Now this could be a bit of an annoyance. If you use a lot of these other objects more, then having to go through this and then click another menu is a little bit tedious. But I'll leave that up to you and what you prefer. You can always just get rid of this if you wanted to. If you go to edit preferences and come to this, if you just delete out this shortcut key, so I don't want the pie, and then shift and A, we get this and now they're at the top of our menu here and we've got all of our normal ones below. So it's up to you which you prefer. I'm gonna bring in a cube and we'll see what this looks like. So firstly, we get this cube. It looks like a normal cube with the exception that it's got all these gizmos on it. And we have all of our information in our box as we normally would so we can change things here, typing in if we'd prefer. Though it doesn't have all of the information here so just bear that in mind. So what I could do is just drag this out using these gizmos and we've got that changing in size. Now, what's good about this is if I G and move this, we can still start changing things without going into this end menu. So let's actually close that because we've got all of the information here. For example, I could go back and change that Y to two and then we've got that set to two. The other thing we can do, which is why we've got all these gizmos here, if I go into wireframe mode, so we can see this, is normally in Blender to get additional edges or edge loops, we have to go into edit mode. I'm gonna to go to edge mode there, control and R, and then we get that and we can scroll up to whatever we want and then escape and we've got that there. But with ND primitive, we don't have to do that. If I just delete that out and we'll bring in a cube again, you can see, let's just come here and we can then scale this up. We can also still just S to scale this up as normal. We can use these gizmos here. For example, if I want more loops on this face and the loop that attaches to it, I can scroll here and then we've got more or less of them. So I could come to somewhere like there, so we've got three. 
Now do note that this is looking at vertices and you've got to remember that we've got vertices on each corner. So if we come down here, we can see this is being set to five. Now we can do this for the other ones as well, which in this instance is gonna go in this direction. And sometimes this to me feels a bit counterintuitive. This is doing this on the Z axis, which makes sense because they're appearing on the Z axis, where you'll notice this one creates them on the face that this gizmo is on, not on the edge this way. And then this one again does this on this face, not the edges parallel to it. This feels quite counterintuitive when the Z axis works in a different way. I think that's a bit of an error there. I think they need to fix that because it's gonna cause confusion when these work in different ways. We can also, if we want to fix all of them, should be able to click and drag and set that to let's say two and hit enter or click and drag down and change that to four and we've got those there. So some minor issues with this version here, but it is great to have a cylinder where we can move this and scale it up and at any point we can change the number of vertices. Now the other thing I'll say about this, which I really dislike, is I don't think that they've thought about this in terms of the gizmo. You'll notice that we have to turn it counterclockwise to make more and then clockwise to make less. That feels very counterintuitive. I'm not a huge fan of that. So I wish they'd have changed that, which is quite an easy thing to do in the gizmos options. So definitely some issues there in terms of the edges that the gizmos are on for making those loops and then the way the gizmos actually work. Now, if we just go to edit preferences and we get rid of ND primitives and we come to modern primitives and then save our preferences, I'm slightly preferring this one, but it does have some issues still as we'll comment. So if I shift a mesh and bring this in, you can see we've got all our normal meshes here and modern primitives is at the top. We can also control shift and M, which I don't think is a great option because the M is on the other side of the keyboard. So that's not perfect. We can always change that. And if you're gonna plan on using these all the time, then, well, this is slightly annoying having an extra menu to go through, though they're quite quick to get to. So let's bring in a cube and we'll have a look at this. And you can see we've got some differences here. The first thing, and this is my massive preference to this, is that we've got all of the information on the gizmos themselves. You can see these numbers. I really need to find out how they've done this because it's my one problem with the gizmos as I covered when I talked about gizmos in a video. So the fact that we can see as I move up what this is changing to is absolutely amazing. I really want this in all my gizmos. I think this should be an automatic option for gizmos. You should be able to just click it on and off. And I don't know why you can't. And we've got the same thing. We've got all of our sizes, we've got all of our dimensions, and we've got our ability to add in our edge loops. And you'll notice this one, the gizmo goes the right way in my mind. It goes clockwise. And if we come to this one, it does it on the correct faces. So it's doing it in the Y direction as we'd expect from our Z. So this is a big improvement in a number of ways. We also have this option here, which will do all of them. And this will still add it to those other edges that we've got. So this will increase all of them, or if we put all of these back to two, let's just try that, we can change this and it will change all of them equally. So I really like this addition. I wish it didn't show it in bits. So here we should have this being set so it only does it as whole numbers. That's a minor inconvenience. If we come to this one, you'll notice it does it better. So they've missed something out here when fiddling with this. They should be changing this so that it only goes up and shows the whole number. Something to tweak there. Now there is one other problem with this. Let's just shift a mesh and bring in a new cube. And that is that if we have a look at the dimensions at the top, this is set as one at the moment. And this isn't one of my units in size. It is actually, if we look here, one, two in size. This seems to show the distance away from the origin instead of showing the actual size itself. If I just click here and bring it up to let's say two, and then we click the N for the N panel, you can see that the dimensions in the Z axis, firstly, while it says two, it's not perfectly exact. So we do need to be aware of that. It's pretty close to it, but here it's actually showing as 1.99999 and here it's rounding to two. So there is a limitation here. If I hit that to two, we will get this as exactly four, but you'll notice it's half the actual size. Now, this again seems slightly lazy programming here. I know you have to do more to get this working in geometry nodes, 
but the idea that this is two and it's not actually the dimension is just going to cause confusion. So I'm not a huge fan of that at this point. I think they really need to tinker with that so that it is correct. But I do love that we've got the numbers on each of the gizmos. I think this is really useful if we bring in a cylinder. Again, we can see all of the information here. Like we can see that 16 vertices and I can see as I up it what it's going to and bring it to 32, which is really, really helpful. There are also other gizmos, which the other one did have, where we can bring in more of these loops. So we have a lot of options of modifying these, and we can still change the size. Though on this one, you'll notice that the size of this is actually 1, which is really annoying. So if we get it to 2, that is actually correct. So you're going to have to somehow know all of the information on this, whereas the width, the 1, is actually the radius, because it's going from the origin. And if we drag it out to, let's say, here, 2... That is now four wide, or approximately four wide. So there's some inconsistencies that need to be fixed. So there's some options for you. I think I prefer the modern primitive at the moment, but I really dislike that the numbering system doesn't work. I'm sure that's fixable. I might have to have a look at that. The other add-on that I want to mention, I have done a video on before. Let's just go to Edit and Preferences and get rid of that, is Reprimitive. So reprimitive is not from Blender. You have to go and get this from outside Blender's extensions. But what this does is if I bring in a cylinder, let's just do that and then G and then R. What we can do at any time is press Control, Alt and A and that brings up all of the options just like the normal window even though we've done things later. And I can always change this in at that point to 32 and then change the radius and diameter this way. Now this doesn't have a modifier panel to it which means that if I do want to change it again, I've got to control Alt and A to bring this up. So there's no gizmos or things for us to tweak around with, but we do have the options of changing everything here. Now, just one quick warning on this, and I will put the link to this in the description. To get this for free, you have to get it from GitHub. There is a paid for version of this on Blender Market, and it doesn't seem to be any more updated than the version that's free in GitHub. I think they're just using it as advertising. I'm not really sure. But there is a version of this on Gumroad as well, though it doesn't appear to be the up-to-date version that seems to cause some problems. So just be aware of that on Reprimitive. And I'll put the link to that video as well as Reprimitive in the description. Hopefully you found that useful and gives you some options of things in the future. What do you think about the positives and the negatives of these? Is there something that I haven't spotted that you have? Please do mention that if there is anything I'm missing. It's really useful for anyone watching this to be able to get all of the information they can in one place. If you did find that useful, please hit that like button. It helps spread the video around. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.